It's been long go for do I know the streets been waiting Which takes a lot of patience cause you never rush straight This was for the record but going down history in the make First it was Elijah Muhammad, now we the honorable black prophet We been in our bag and out of our feelings securing all the profit And going outside don't know what you hearing so miss me with that gossip Saying sucker free from mop shit, let someone get side of pocket Whoa, we come from different walks of life but relate to the same cause Sight and live, live a fight, laid up behind them hospital walls They focus like a face but like some Bring it sharper than a knife Take a cookie from the dark Grind it, wrap it in the rock YBT with stay lawyer, no damn it's a prop Shots to my producers, King Jones, it's a hop AR with the alley, you I do him up a lot Far from a corny nigga, I'm the hottest shot of cop I had a boss up for a check Move my fam up out the jets Draft some key players in my set Sponsor for the blue cheese that ranch I am a club member, you a guest Speak of my name, better put respect Step on the me, got a couple right Fuck you got now, or who got up next? Yeah, a hey, y'all the prophet Charlie Black, a deadly combination. Combo. It's been long go, but do I, I know the streets been waiting? Know, Which I takes know. a lot of patience, cause you never rush straight. This was for the record, but going down history in the making. A hey, y'all the prophet Charlie Black, Black. a deadly combination. Black. It's been long go, but do I know the streets been waiting? Black. Which takes a lot of patience, cause you never rush deadly straight. Combo. This was for the record, but going down history in the making. Hey, all the prophet Charlie Black. Profit, that's a fact. Going down in history, and it's a fact. It's a deadly combo, niggas know that. Profit, that's a fact. Black profit from the bottom of the map. Atlanta, Georgia, the Florida. We up up in them waters, it's sombre. Black profit, that's a fact. Deadly combination, y'all got it that. Ready for that shit, Charlie Black. Sickle Cell Awareness 365. Today, I have my guest co-host, Dr. Tomia Austin, that will be assisting me in sickle cell trait. So, I first wanted to start off that I know you guys are used to seeing me with my co-host, Jennifer. She wanted me to let you all know that she's stuck in the stupid-ass hospital, mm -hmm. as she <laughs> says. Um, so just keep her in your prayers, send her positive vibes, but she will be back with us. Um, if you know anything about sickle cell, you know how unpredictable it is. So sometimes you may just see me and a ghost guest co-host. You may just see me. You may just see Jennifer. Or it may be times that e neither one of us are capable of doing it today. But we tr promise to be back with you guys and continue to give you guys sickle cell education. So... Dr. Tamia is, Dr. Austin is with the As One Foundation, which is a foundation that strictly talks about sickle cell. Can you um, give just a little bit more before we show the clip of Mr. Darling talking about what, how the foundation came about? So uh, DeVar Darling is an identical twin. Okay. He uh, founded As One Foundation in memory of his identical twin brother who actually died of sickle cell trait exertion. Wow. Okay. Um, and as one came from the story of them being born in Nassau, Bahamas, mm -hmm. doctors, mom, dad, throughout the pregnancy they had been hearing they didn't they didn't know twins were coming. They okay. were not aware twins were coming until Devon followed Devard out of the birth canal. Wow. And throughout the pregnancy they had been hearing two hearts beating as one. Okay. And even as he says, death would not separate them. Um, he always played football, 
with a picture of his brother inside oh, of his dang. pads in his memory and decided to start the foundation to memorialize his brother and then uh, and the foundation was started in 2007 and then okay. I joined in 2010 uh, the mission initially was to unlock and unleash the full potential of young people while uh, assisting them in achieving their dreams in the face of life challenges. In 2011, after I had been there for a year, we worked with the board to update the mission to be about educating and increasing awareness of sickle cell trait while encouraging young people to achieve their dreams in the face of life challenges. and. Since then, our work has been in that, raising awareness about sickle cell trait, uh, promoting hydration as mm. the, you know, that's the catch, that's the kicker that is relevant to everyone, sickle mm -hmm. cell trait or disease or not, and uh, to hopefully assist in, you know, the education about uh, trait, family planning, and especially the target population of those that exert, primarily athletes, okay. and, and hopefully prevent the death that Devon suffered, right. at the same time making his life uh, matter and, and his death not be in vain. Oh, I think that's awesome. I think that's what Mr. Darling talked about in this quick clip um, that we have of him um, just kind of explaining what, um, how the As One Foundation came about, as you stated. So let's take a look at that. Asma Foundation started with uh, two young boys, me and my twin brother, growing up back home in the Bahamas, having a dream and goal of making it to the NFL and giving back to our communities. And that is the number one reason why it was started. Um, I was left here to carry on that dream and that legacy after my twin brother passed away February 26, 2001. And um, the name Asma Foundation was born out of uh, a folklore story of my mother telling us uh, that she never knew that she was having twins. Uh, doctor only heard one heartbeat and uh, when I came out hey, it was a surprise that the bond was in there too. So two hearts beating as one, as one foundation. That's where it all birthed from. That's where it all started right there in Nassau, Bahamas and having young boys dream and, and accomplish their goal is what it's all about. Darling Dash is a very fun-filled family event. Uh, this year will be held. So that, like I stated, is um, he explained how the As One Foundation got started, like you said. And I think it's really important for people to know um, about sickle cell trait. I know this show talks mostly about the disease, but the trait mm -hmm. is just as important. And I know that sometimes doctors don't fully disclose um, what what can go on with people having the trait. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they think that, oh, I'm okay because you know I don't have any major symptoms. So what are some of the common um, misconceptions around sickle cell trait? If, if I may, I, I would like to just roll back a little bit and just say that DeVard, he is a now retired NFL player. He, okay. He's a wide receiver in the National Football League and since retirement, which is probably now seven, year, seven eight years, he's still in football shape. Okay. He works out regularly and that's important because that leads into the answer of your question, the misconceptions. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> providers are educated with the standardized medical school curriculum that mm -hmm. studies sickle cell trait the equivalent of five minutes. Wow. in a typical medical school curriculum. So, you know, as much as we bang our heads, and I am not a, a, a physician, I'm not a clinician, I'm a researcher, uh, but they don't know what they don't know, and often they don't know that they don't know. Right. So um, the misconceptions are what the aged researchers said, which is people with sickle cell trait live a normal life, they will have no issues. And the brief family planning advising is that there's a likely, the probability, which the statistic is one in four chance, but the probability is uh, of 
having a child with sickle cell disease increases if you procreate with someone with with also with sickle cell trait. trait. And that's that's pretty much the advising that you know happens. Although testing is now mandated, all newborn screenings test for sickle cell disease, and if trait is diagnosed, then you're usually a parent that receives a letter in the mail with three bullets, and that letter goes where in the trash in the kitchen drawer. And the next time that there is a mandated test is if they are going to the military or possibly, or if they're going to play collegiate sports. So elementary school, yeah. high school, community sports, right. it's not there. There's no mandate. So knowing about sickle cell trait is usually a happening that happens when it's too late. Yeah. And, and that's what I keep, that's what I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about um, because it is true that sickle cell trait can seem asymptomatic. Right. But general advising is it is asymptomatic. And that just is not, if I believe patients, if I believe the community mm -hmm. and the common denominator is sickle cell trait, then there's more to the story than that and yeah. that that's like a lumped in misconception but if we take each one of them we could talk for the next five hours for right. each right right <laughs> so so let's show a, a quick clip on how sickle cell disease is transferred when two people with sickle cell trait um have a child now this chart will not it, it doesn't say that with each pregnancy there's um, oh, you're going to have one child with that has no disease, mm -hmm. one child or two children with a trait and one with a disease. These are the percentages yes. each pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So there's if you have two people with the trait, there's a 25% chance that they'll come out completely normal, 25% mm -hmm. chance that they'll have sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. and a 50% chance that they'll have the trait with each pregnancy. I need people to under understand yes. that. Um, so that is just a view of how things are passed down um, from the parent to child. And I've had people to run into me that um, I've had one person say that both of her parents have, no, I'm sorry, she said that her sister had the disease, but neither one of her parents had the trait because she didn't have the disease. And I guess, I mean, I, I advise her as an advocate, but, you know, I'm not a doctor, so most people kind of yeah. let that information go mm -hmm. over their head, but it's still something to be noted. So that's very important when we're dating yeah. and meeting other people um, that I think should come along with the questioning of if you have any other <clears throat> diseases going yes. on, you know, do you have sickle cell trait? And then it gets into um, the different types of hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss a little bit about the different types of hemoglobin? Oh, my gosh. Again, a very long show. Right. <laughs> so I'll just, uh, and I qualify this by saying I am not a clinician. I am a researcher. Um, and based on my research, there are hundreds, hundreds of traits. Um and there are about 12 that actually have names from C trait to D trait, F trait, Monroe trait, and so on. Um, the, and there are, like, thalassemia is not tested for in the newborn screenings. You usually have to be a little along in age, like beyond three years old, before you can even be tested for thalassemia trait. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as with every sickle cell disease patient, Snowflakes, it's the same with sickle cell trait. It's just mm. so many more. There's an estimated 4 million in the United States that carry wow. trait to the estimated 90 to 100,000 that have disease. And the majority of that 4 million don't know. Mm. And they are people, not just African Americans, they are people of African, Asian, Indian, Latin, Italian, Irish, Greek, and Turkish descent. So their skin color is really, you know, it's not a skin color thing, it's a bloodline thing. 
And, you know, you go back to the one drop and migration and mixed race births. It, it's, it's worth taking the time, going to do the quick blood draw and have yourself tested and know your status and not play the principle of exclusion because of your skin color or right. what you may even be told. You know, right. there is a, um, uh, he's a lobbyist here, right here in Atlanta. Andy Lord. White fellow. Yes. Blonde hair, and I believe there's, there's a blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And he is a trait carrier and did not find out until he was an adult and a father. Mm -hmm. And his son was born with sickle cell trait, if I'm remembering the, the story correctly. And mm -hmm. he had to go and have a conversation with grandma yes. to find out, you know, what is going on. Because apparently, and, and again, how, how can we say these things didn't show symptoms because again with 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 sickle cell trait sometimes a person is is thinking they're cramping mm -hmm. when that is actually trait crisis pain wow and um i i hear so often from trait warriors as we call them uh you know well my I, i'm told i was having growing pains but if you're 30 are you having growing pains? Right. You know, right. that, you know, that because your blood cells sickle. Right. Yeah. And, and we don't think about that. And I've seen arguments on, on Facebook where someone with the trait says that they're having, maybe they call it a crisis mm -hmm. or maybe, and I can see where the person with the disease may be more severe. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean that a person with the trait does not have pain. So that's a very interesting point as well. Um, just the fact that they they deal with additional problems as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of my mom's issues are, stem from sickle cell trait, and her doctors won't say it, but some I just feel like that's what it is. <laughs> they yeah. don't they don't have mm -hmm. a, a a reason or any substantiation for what else it could be, but. I, that's I, I truly believe that some of her problems are from yeah. sickle cell trait. Um, so can the trait ever turn into the disease? The trait can never turn into the disease. Good. That's um, good. <laughs> uh, the, I know you. I know on the sickle cell disease side, you get the question, unfortunate question in the hospital. Well, how long have you had sickle cell disease? You don't develop sickle cell trait either. You're right. born with it. Right. You have it or you don't. Right. And and it's not contagious. Right. Even though we're practicing social distancing, right. <laughs> sickle cell trait is not contagious, right. just like sickle cell disease right. is not. But when it is present, because your blood cells as a person with sickle cell trait uh, do regenerate slower. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so when exertion, dehydration, elevation come into play, that's when it becomes problematic for someone with sickle cell trait. Okay, you just answer my next oh, I'm question. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. okay. It just transitions into that. So, th some of the things that people with the trait should be aware of is trait exertion, like mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. um, dehydration, dehydration, which can lead to the trait exertion. Mm -hmm. Explain a little bit about what trait exertion is. So, as I said, if you could just think about the science behind the fact that normal blood cells regenerate, you know, just like we're blinking our eyes, just like we're sitting here breathing, your cells are regenerating. Right. Sickle cells take double the time, sometimes triple the time, sometimes quadruple that time. And that process can be threatened by lack of recovery, lack of hydration, lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So, if, if you, as a person with normal blood, need after, say you just go run for a mile and you need to stop and put your hands on your hips, some people put their arms above their head, whatever it is that you do to recover, mm -hmm. a person with sickle cells might need double that. Yeah. But put that in a situation with a, a football conditioning workout. Right. And you're playing for position, you're playing for notoriety, you're playing for, in some cases, a job. Mm -hmm. And your coach is not educated, is unaware of what uh, the requirements are for sickle cell traits. So 
he or she pushes you and then you allow yourself to be pushed because of the cultural right. things around athletics and your body is saying I'm gassed I need to take a break but your culture says I got to push through right um water is weakness I'm a warrior and your body has sent you messages mm -hmm. and continues to try to send you or it continues to send you messages and you continue to ignore, ignore it. it right and that is what can lead to the exertion where you can't recover. And that's one of the things DeVar uh, talked, uh, talks often about that he experienced, even um, that he just couldn't recover. He couldn't recover. He couldn't get that break mm -hmm. that you, and, and eventually, thankfully, because he's still here with us, he did find a way to recover. But um, in, his, in his brother's case, he passed out multiple times yeah. and finally passed out forever. And so dehydration, we all need the water to help stuff get through mm -hmm. our blood. So mm -hmm. when you, by the time you're thirsty, it's too late for all of right, us. Right, right, right. And then elevation, of course, that's just a threat to your oxygen level. You know, um, going to Denver, we've heard about Ryan Clark, the football, the Steel, uh, Pittsburgh Steeler. Right. Uh, who ended up losing his spleen, mm -hmm. and he has sickle cell trait, and he's a sickle cell disease advocate, but he has sickle cell trait. Well, I, I, I've heard of Ryan Clark and mm -hmm. then limiting his plan in Colorado, but I did not know the spleen part, so that's, oh, yeah. that's new to me. Splenic infarction. Wow. Which is something that is Common. associated very, very commonly with sickle cell trait. And the last thing, there is a rare cancer. Renal medullary person. carcinoma, sickle cell trait is the common denominator. Um, it usually manifests physically as lower uh, flank pain, mm -hmm. but I've often by that time it's too Dang. late because it's diagnosed primarily in stage four. Wow. But I do know of at least one case of it being diagnosed in stage one and okay. it was able to uh, be, the tumor was able to be removed and the young lady's still alive. So why do you think they were able to catch it early with her? Well, in that case, they weren't looking for it. Um, okay. I believe she was having, uh, she was old enough to be walking. Um, she was 18 months at the time, okay. but wasn't walking. And um, she, so they did the ultrasound, I believe, just of her lower body and by happenstance found okay. the tumor. Wow. Uh, of course, our advocacy is trying to have it where anyone that has sickle cell trait have annual screenings of mm -hmm. their kidneys, regardless of cost, regardless of, cause some, some we've been criticized to, because of this could be raising uh, worry and, and mm -hmm. causing you know undue stress but if you can diagnose something in stage one and remove it versus have it develop because by the signs are blood in the urine pain and other things but by the time all those things have happened it's too late yeah it, it, it i think i think it's somewhere between six months to two years that it you know, causes the demise. Wow. So, and sickle cell trait is the common denominator there as well. Wow, that, that's new as well. Um, we've spoke before on that, but I know a lot of people in the sickle cell community, even those with the trait, you know, had no idea about that. I've heard people also mention, and correct me if I say it wrong, but rhabdomyolysis? Rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis, yeah. Okay. So in rhabdo, that it's called for short, is something that affects people with sickle cell trait, but it can affect people with, that don't have sickle cell trait. And okay. that was uh, pronounced quite a bit uh, as the popularity of CrossFit okay. rose, that, that high intensity working out. Some people work until, um, I forget the term, but basically you push yourself until you can't go anymore. Okay. Uh, but rhabdo is basically where you're, you work yourself so hard that your muscle tissue breaks down Whoa. and seeps into your blood. Of course, dark urine, uh, in a, I mean, just absolute loss of use, usually in your larger muscles. Mm. Uh, people can recover, but if sickle cell trait is, is there, uh, it's usually 
death. And that is what's wow. listed on Devon's the death certificate. Wow. Because also, sickle cell trait does not have a cause of death code. So mm. our statistics, our data, our, um, oh goodness, I'm, what is the word for, um, I can't believe I'm, I'm uh, sur uh, surveillance. The surveillance okay. of sickle cell trait hospitalization data is skewed because there is no cause of death code. Whoa. So if you, you know, if you don't have a cause of death code, any death certificate that is of a person that died of sickle cell trait is not going to say that was the primary. They're going to say it was exhaustion. And Devon says exhaustion, rhabdomyolysis complicated by sickle cell trait. trait. Wow. But every death is not, you know, listed, you know, every death certificate doesn't list it that way. So we have some hurdles, but hey, I'm sitting here on a sickle cell disease focused shows talking about sickle cell traits. So we're making strides, Absolutely. you know, I, I mean, amazing things are happening. People are talking about it. And mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe that sickle cell disease education Sickle cell disease education is not comprehensive if it doesn't include sickle cell trait education. Um, simple, simple fact, if you have sickle cell disease and you have a child with anyone, trait, disease, nothing, your, your child will at least have sickle cell trait, and that's just a fact. And that was shown in a little bit in the picture that yes. we showed earlier, so absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think you kind of covered about um, people with the trait traveling and playing sports um, and basically the precautions is to hydrate, 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 hydrate. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Clark being um, limited in his, his playings in Colorado because the altitude is so mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. The first time, even though I had the disease, the first time I flew, um, I was 14 years old and I got sick mm -hmm. and they basically explained, you know, the higher the altitude, yeah. the less the oxygen. So it's it's difficult. So, but this doesn't mean that people with the trait can't play, can't right. travel, or can't can't play sports. Yeah, just have to take these precautions when you participate in these kind of activities. So, yeah. Devard says it's important to know your body. Right. And what we say uh, in our operation hydration program. Um, in, when we are educating young people about hydration, regardless of sickle cell trait status, is to hydrate before, during, and after any physical exertion activity. And that's football, basketball, cheering, marching band, running, running track, dancing, hydrate before, during, and after. And I always, you know, I say, look, the new school science is it goes away from eight glasses of water a day. It, it says consume half your body weight in ounces of water a day. Mm -hmm. And when I'm standing in front of an audience, I ask, okay, so if you are a person that weighs 200 pounds, you should be consuming a ha 100 ounces of water a day. Right. We go through a few numbers, and you know, I, I show a picture of a little dog getting water. We water our plants. We even put water in our cars to prevent, you know, running hot, plants mm -hmm. dying, dogs getting lethargic, our pets getting lethargic. But in order to keep a human from dehydration, that's the science. You must consume half your body weight, at least, right, of and, water a day. And it's it's difficult sometimes and to, it's difficult. to reach that. People don't do it. Hell, I don't do it, right. you know. But and so and women in particular are, are mm -hmm. highly dehydrated. Okay. And then you add sickle cell disease or trait to that, a, a blood disorder that requires mm -hmm. proper hydration, you know, that can explain some of the complications. Um, so hydration is, I mean, it, it's the reason why your skin looks as beautiful as, as it looks. Thank you. But there's so many <laughs> other benefits of hydration, especially when sickle cell disease or trait is present. Wow. That's that's a lot of information to take in <laughs> yeah. and like you said water is uh, hydrating is great for anybody no matter what illness no matter if you're completely healthy so I completely understand that um so my next question is I know you said that um people with the trait should get annual tests on their kidneys are there any other specialists that people with the trait need to see well, believe it or not, uh, I've heard 
everything from uh, ocular issues, hearing issues. I mean, if you just think about the fact that uh, your blood is everywhere. Yeah. And so you can have a crisis anywhere you have blood, right? Mm -hmm. So nephrologist, you know, it, it depends on what complications you're having. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely say nephrology just because I want people to have somebody looking at their kidneys. Right. It is not required. And, and then quite frankly, there is adversity to having annual tests for sickle cell trait. It is not a welcome thing at this point. Right. Um, but like the family that I know where there was the uh, renal medullary carcinoma diagnosis and the little girl lived, they have all been allowed to be tested for it because it's there in their right. family. But it's not so readily available. And the, the workers, the peop the CBOs that are um, focused on RMC will tell you. I mean, it's really been an uphill battle. But um, I, I hear often that trait carriers sometimes have this pain or discomfort in the same place on their body. Mm. You know, they, they're, they suffer in their arm, they suffer in their leg, they suffer in their ankles, they suffer in their neck. Um, mm. So, you know, orthopedists, you know, um, but I am also a believer in natural medicine. So Cairo, right. massage, you know, submersion, you know, all, all of those things. So homeopathic yeah. provider would be great as well. Right. So if you guys have any questions for Dr. Austin, please give us a call at 470-251-4647. That's 470-251-4647. Um, so when someone with the trait, is there any pushback when someone with the trait goes to the doctor's office and say, hey, I, I want you to look at my kidneys just to be on the preventative side of things is there any pushback because i know when you get into the business side or the legal side of of the medical uh system it it's it's troublesome yeah. mm -hmm. so is there any pushback if someone with the trait goes in and say hey test you know look at this unfortunately yes mm -hmm. um uh you the to the process to get a referral for a different specialist is you know, it is, it is. And you have to show some, so those people that, um, even have shown evidence, uh, and, and they have received pushback, unfortunately. Um, and like I said, I've known of examples when it was in the family and that's how they were able to, uh, get the, uh, referral. Okay. Um, but it's, it's not, a, it's not a cheap, you know, the ultrasound is not inexpensive. Uh, but so this is why we advocate so that, you know, in, in, in this community, in the sickle cell community, you really get an education. You, you guys could be walking around with MD behind your name because you're doing so much, Thank you, you know, <laughs> advocating and having to study and share each other's stories. Uh, and we want to see that on the sickle cell trait side as well, because true, it's not as many hospitalizations. But if you look at the numbers of people that are affected that don't know that these mean these things, mm -hmm. you probably would have some percentage similarities. Yeah. And that is the, the basis. That's the background. That's the, you know, back, back up that you need as far as documentation uh, and having that survey, the data, you know, right. that's, that's needed. But unfortunately, yes, the pushback is there. It's, it's probably more there than not. Uh, and I can completely believe that. I also wanted to mention that if anyone in at the Atlanta area is um, interested in being trait tested, that the Sickle Cell Foundation of Georgia, um, which is on in southwest Atlanta on Benjamin E. Mays Drive, they do trait testing. I know at one point it was mandatory um, before you got married that you and your partner go and get tested, mm -hmm. but it's not mandated anymore. It's suggested, yeah. highly suggested, yeah. 
but it, it's not mandated. So I just wanted to put that out there. If anyone wants to get in contact with them, that number is 404-755-1641. And even if you're not dating anyone, it's just something that you need to know yeah. um, because you never know who you meet, who you fall in love with, mm -hmm. and what can happen from that. And I would hate for anyone to find out um, that their child had or that they have the trait and now their child has the disease once you're pregnant and now it's like okay so what do I do uh, I wouldn't want anybody to go in panic mode a lot of our parents found out once we were born so and I'm sure my mom was kind of panicked when she found out yeah. hey you're you have a child with sickle cell disease so it's really really important that you guys get trait tested and that unfortunately is not rare. <laughs> That's usually how they're, it's found out. You, yeah. know, you have two trait parents that had no idea. Mm -hmm. And whether they would have changed it or not, that's debatable. But um, that's why we feel so you know, strongly about the family planning, right. advising. Uh, of course, people are designer babies and genetic yeah. counseling and all of that is happening, but to have a choice, and I, I I know a young man who was had invited his future mother-in-law to you know request her permission to take her daughter's hand in marriage, and she asked him the question, mm -hmm. and he said, actually, yeah, I do have yeah. trait, and she said, I can't give you permission to have mm -hmm. uh, marry my daughter because she has trait, and we just buried her brother, Ooh, and wow. they they did not marry, didn't marry. no, they didn't. So it may does it have to be that extreme? And, and maybe that's not so extreme, but... For some people it yeah. is. Because I've heard stories of, you know, parents that advocate to their kids. Even um, Karan Riley, I believe his name is. He was at the uh, Advocacy Day uh, mm -hmm. at the Capitol a couple months ago. And he has a trait. And his mom always told him, hey don't get with anybody with the trait. So that education starts there. And ultimately, ultimately, like he said, that's how you eradicate the yep. disease is to educate even those with the trait. And he said every time he would go on a date, he would ask the question. And it, it's, it's kind of weird to bring that conversation to the forefront when you're dating someone, especially if they have no idea what's going mm -hmm. on. But it's a very important question for us because we – we want we're kind of looking at things long term if, yeah. if you have the trait i'm sorry we can be friends mm -hmm. you know that's it but so that education is extremely important so can people with sickle cell trait donate blood yes that it's they're they're only going to use the um the platelets okay but um all information sources i have say that blood donation from trait carriers is welcomed okay um that's that's good to know because i'm sure some people were under the impression that they, that they couldn't because they have the trait and with the disease and just more than people with sickle cell disease really really depend on blood donations even now it's even more we we gotta ha i know people are scared to leave mm -hmm. the house mm -hmm. but there are still people who are depending on blood donations yeah. so you guys get out there and still continue to donate mm -hmm. blood for our warrior team and just anybody who's really dependent on those blood donations. Don't let this yeah. scariness stop you because yeah. it can still save a life. So I know you mentioned um, about homeopathic care. Are there any other tips that people with sickle cell trait need to take on to make sure they keep or maintain a healthy uh healthy lifestyle with the sickle cell trait like staying away from alcohol or just whatever it is well uh, the the biggest thing is to not make the mistake of believing the hype that sickle cell trait is asymptomatic okay symptoms can manifest and often if you're not properly uh, armed with good information it can be dire um i would take any pain or especially constant pain seriously homeopathic you know the number one is hydration yeah. i mean it's just so important to maintain proper hydration uh it, you know be active 
you know, this d d sedentary lifestyle is not required for sickle cell trait. And I personally even believe for sickle cell disease. I know I a sickle cell disease person who is a wrestler, you know, yeah. and, um, but she speaks very much so on knowing how she wants to show up in her life. So she knows her body, she understands her disease and understands what it means that, look, if I wanna do this and I wanna do that, okay, so I wanna be a wrestler, I wanna be the president of the engineering club and I wanna be able to go to this party. So what am I gonna do? How, how, be how much better am I gonna eat? How much mm -hmm. better am I going to hydrate? How much better am I going to rest so that I can do all of these things? And that is mindset to yeah. me. That's pure empowerment. And, um, so to your question about homeopathic, um, it, it, you know, prevention, 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 that is keeping your immune system good. Right. So if you are living in these compromised times, Tamika Mosley, she is so great. Have you heard of her? I've heard of oh her. Oh my gosh. She's so great. And uh, and again, these things are for people with normal hemoglobin, right. but certainly if you have a possibility of compromise to take your vitamin C, mm -hmm. you know, uh, use your oregano oils, um, get good rest, you know, uh, practice meditation, relaxation, mm -hmm. saying no, you know, when you really need to say no yeah. and, and not taking too much on know your body and start paying attention as early as you know if you're raising a child with sickle cell trait you know help him or her understand what's going on with their body so that they communicate they can communicate what's going on with sickle cell trait the same way that they can communicate the urge to eliminate you know if they have to do number one or number two it's not rocket science here to learn and be in touch with your body and beyond that, that's how they'll, you know, age. I see this as a kid with asthma. Yeah. You know, they have to have their pump. It's yeah. not, it shouldn't be stigmatizing. And that's the word. That's the word that has caused people with sickle cell trait to lose their jobs, to not be able to be a pilot or a flight attendant uh, because of stigma. And stigma is basically a huge assumption that's- Based on fear. Yeah. I think it's mostly based on it is. fear. It is. And, you know, the, the, the sickle cell trait mandate that's put on by the NCAA is criticized for that. I don't mind the testing. I just think it needs to be comprehensive education associated. I want everybody that has the sickle cell trait to know. And if you don't have the sickle cell trait, I want you to know that too. Right. And right now we only have two mandates. That's a newborn and that's the NCAA screening, National Collegiate Athletic Association screening. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be only for D1 schools, the larger schools. Mm -hmm. But uh, I happen to have the privilege of knowing Dale Lloyd's parents, okay. who um, De Devon died in 2001. He was at Florida State, a D1 school. Mm -hmm. And the mandate was in place then. Mm -hmm. That's how they found out they had sickle cell trait. Wow. But they were just told, don't have a baby with someone with trait and you'll be fine. They weren't told anything about exertion or hydration or anything wow. like that. And then 2006, here, Dale Lloyd, who's not at a D1 school, but he exerted and died mm -hmm. in wow. September um, uh, from sickle cell trait exertion. But his death did lead to the expansion Good. of the mandate um, from D1 to down. two and three. So that's what, what we have right now. Yeah. And it, everything can be improved for sure. Absolutely. But testing, find out. Thank you so much, um, uh, Georgia Foundation, for offering that service because it's needed. It is. And, and pe people need to know and not just people with brown skin. Right. Mm -hmm. my, one of my cousins found out that he had the trait when he was playing football for University of North Carolina. And he suffered, I think it, he, it was dehydrated. He was cramping really bad. And he probably experienced the same thing as not being able to recover. Mm -hmm. So when he did get to the hospital, and um, that's when he found out, hey, I have the trait. And that's a that's a close cousin. Mm -hmm. And his father and my mother are, are siblings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was kind of a shocker for them. I'm the only one in my family with the actual disease. Mm -hmm. So... 
that was kind of a shocker for him. But like I said, he didn't find out till he was playing college football. Mm -hmm. He had played high school football the entire four years. So um, um, that was pretty much a wake up call yeah, for him. Yeah. So, so what are the best ways for someone with the trait to, um, to support and advocate for those living with the disease? So resoundingly, assist in the education, you know, help us all understand that sickle cell disease education is comprehensive when it includes sickle cell trait education. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even, I'm, I'm so surprised, but I shouldn't be, that people don't even understand that there is a difference between sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. Well. People say it, and they say, they use it, it by inter, uh, uh, ex interchanging sickle cell mm -hmm. anemia, sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. and there there are varying, uh, you know, derivatives of it, mm -hmm. uh, but trait is not disease. Uh, and, and unfortunately, there's even some train of thought that says trait is a form of disease, but yeah. there are distinctions. And right. that right. comes with the, the education that I feel that a person with sickle cell trait, um, because of the probability that you could birth a child, because mm -hmm. of the probability that your parent could possibly be a disease warrior, it's in the family. Yeah, it's it's in the blood. So let's tell as many people as we can about it, and educate. And uh, when we do the operation hydration, we're you know we educate in schools, educate coaches, student athletes, and we're looking to we're formulating an idea of a football camp, an operation hydration mm -hmm. operation hydration football camp. And the idea is that as wildly as the thought is i want sickle cell trait carriers to be so prepared mm -hmm. so strong so aware that it's cool to have sickle cell trait right. and that that's because a, a person with sickle cell trait is aware of their hydration mm -hmm. needs they're aware of their body needs so they're going to come to practice ready yeah um so that's that's another way that a sickle cell trait can support sickle cell disease is to not be a victim. And in the sickle cell disease population of you that are doing it, I mean really doing it, trait it's in the it um I always tell this story, Dominique. Her last name is slipping my mind. Is it Goodson? Uh-uh. Harbor? Friend. Friend. Okay. That's it. She she spoke into my life, I say, okay. by saying that, because it can be discouraging sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of money to fund sickle cell trade education. There's not a pharmaceutical associated. So uh, the funding is, you know, it's pure grassroots yeah. funding. And so it can be discouraging. And she said, look, as a disease warrior, she has sickle cell disease. We need you. You are mm -hmm. our army. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a visual. Usually in the hospital with the sickle cell disease patient, their parent is 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 a trait carrier, mm -hmm. or maybe their child advocate is a trait carrier. So when I talk to the pharmaceuticals, when I'm able to get audience, I'm like, hey, you're missing out an audi on an audience because these are the influencers in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times has your mom said, baby, well, maybe you should think about so-and-so. She's using influence on you. Yeah. And vice versa. So supporting each, supporting each other as not mutually exclusive. We're all in this together as one. That's what we say at the As One yeah. Foundation. Um, and you know, just, you know, I know my mom raised me and my sister, y'all, all y'all got. So yeah. if anybody was coming up to one of us, they had to deal with both of us. Right. And that is truly, you know, uh, a, a good colleague says, maybe not think of it as trait. Let's think of it as major or minor sickle right. cell, major sickle cell, minor. So maybe you know some people won't say okay you don't have full-blown disease yet but i have full-blown trait right right 
Wow. So you have dropped a wealth of knowledge about sickle cell trait. Can you speak very briefly about what you have going on in the Atlanta area with your foundation? Well, um, the the fact that sickle cell trait is global, uh, we take advantage of any and every opportunity. So okay. I'm so thankful to be able to be here in studio with you. But that Operation Hydration Football Camp, if it happens, it's going to happen here. It's going to happen. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So I thank you so much for coming in with me today and just giving this knowledge on sickle cell trait. And I hope that our viewers were able to take something from it. I want to just quickly say that the sickle cell 41st annual race that was originally for April 11th has been postponed due to all the chaos that's going on. I hope you guys are practicing your social distancing and staying at home, only going out when you need to. Just keep your hands washed, mm -hmm. keep it sanitized, and just stay safe out there. Stay clean, stay virus free. Yes. Um, also, I wanna thank our sponsors, Kids Stop Daycare and Learning Center, the Apex Museum, and the Black Professionals Network for helping us put this thing together together please continue to follow us on youtube facebook instagram twitter at sca 365 or sickle cell awareness 365 also find um, dr austin at as one foundation, as one foundation um, on network. instagram mm -hmm. yeah instagram facebook you can also order these awesome t-shirts on our website www.sca365.com and we'll check you guys out in a couple of weeks bye We could, and y'all the profit, Charlie Black, a daily combination. It's been long overdue, I know the streets been waiting. This takes a lot of patience, cause you never rush straight. This was for the record, but going down history in the making. And y'all the profit, Charlie Black, a daily combination. It's been long overdue, I know the streets been waiting. This takes a lot of patience, cause you never rush straight. This was for the record, but going down history in the making. First it was Lodge Muhammad, now we the honorable black prophet. We been in our Bagging out of our feelings, securing all the profit And going outside, don't know what you hear, so miss me with that gossip Saying sucker free from up shit, let someone get out of pocket Whoa, we come from different walks of life, but relate to the same cause Fight and live, live the fight, laid up behind them hospital walls They focus like the face, but like syringes sharper than the knife Take a cookie from the dark, grind it, wrap it in the rock YBT we stay loyal, no damn miss a prop Shots to my producers, King Jones, it's a hop Ayo with the alley, you by I do him up a lot.